Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today we are building something from the Lord of the Rings, at least I, I think it is. Um, I, I got asked by a, a lot of you to build something from it, which surprisingly I haven't done yet. Uh, so I was looking at weapons and armor and other various things that I could build. And as some of you know who followed the channel for a while, you know I love shields. Um, I've got a lot of them in the man cave back there. And the, the thing I typed into a Google search was Lord of the Rings shields. And this image popped up. Um, I recently saw somebody that I follow on YouTube built one of the elven shields on that particular set of movies and I didn't want to copy them so I found another one that I thought was a little bit more unique. A lot of them are kite shields or um, kind of a Nordic themed and I wanted to go with something that was a little bit more unique in shape and I kind of dove in on the um, the dwarven shield that's that's on there. I found like two other reference images, one that actually had the the backside of it, or at least the interpretation of the backside. I'm not sure if it's like a concept art. I couldn't actually find screenshots of it. Maybe those of you who know Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit series a little bit better could point me in the right direction. Um, it, to me, all I could find were images that referred to it as concept art, but it was designed by Weta Workshop and they make some amazing things. So I'm gonna attempt to make a Dwarven shield from Weta Workshop's design for Lord of the Rings. Let's get to building. So after looking for a bunch of reference images for this one particular shield, I finally found a couple that would work and then hand drew a simple template on a poster board. My templates are always free and in the description of the videos. Read the cover page of the template to help you figure out the markings and help you better construct the different shapes. I traced the base onto some 10 millimeter foam and cut enough for two layers of each part. I laid down a layer of contact cement and stick the parts together. I also cut out the front trim to glue up as well. Once the stack is glued up, then I cut an inward 45 degree angle cut into the foam. Keep in mind, you are seeing me work out the template as I go, so parts on the finished version will probably have color coded edges with other random markings. This is me figuring stuff out as I go and correcting it so it's easier for you later. The sides are similar in construction as the top. Pay attention to the fact that the top and bottom of the shield have points and the sides are flat. Before you add the trim, arrange the parts in a diamond shape like they'll be arranged in the final result so that you can put the trim on the proper sides. I cut the decorative knot on the front of the shield all out in one piece and then glued it down to the base after sanding an overlap area with my rotary tool. I did my best to transition the slope from that overlap edge. Thank you. 
Where the sides meet at the corners, they have a 45 degree cut inward. The parts that connect to the front of the shield are straight 90 degrees. Then all of the edges on the front piece are 45 degree angle cuts. If the inside seams do not connect fully, you can backfill the gap on the back side with hot glue to make it solid. It doesn't really matter on the inside of the shield because all of the edges and seam lines are going to be covered up with trim work anyways. From the images I looked at, the outside kind of looked like it was metal tacked over a wooden frame, so that's kind of what I'm going for here. On the inside, I burned in the plank lines for my wood and then used my stone bit on my rotary tool to carve out the wood texture. To cover up the seam lines on the inside, I cut some 4mm EVA into long 1 inch wide strips and then trim them to fit as I go. To coat a bunch of these skinny little strips at one time, I tape the back side of it and then run the contact cement over the front. That's why you see the blue tape there. I couldn't make out much detail on my reference images, they were kind of blurry, so I just decided I was going to add rivets to it to make it look a little bit more authentic. And I did this by pulling out a sanding drum just a little bit on my rotary tool and plunging it into the foam. For the handle, I used two elbow joints and some one inch PVC pipe. I kind of figured out the measurement for my hand as I went, so making it wide enough and stand off of the deal long enough there. I didn't like the placement on the reference image, so I thought moving it over just a little bit would help me to get my left arm in there, which is my non-dominant. I know a strap would have helped secure it better to the arm, but I didn't really see that in the references, and this is going to mount to my wall on display and I didn't really see the purpose of it.
the dwarven warrior that this shield belonged to saw lots of epic battles. So with a stone bit in my rotary tool, I gouged out random slash marks and divots to add battle damage to the front of my prop to make him look like a fierce warrior who had seen some rough times. After heat sealing two coats of Plasti Dip, then I painted the outside red and the inside brown with spray paint, taped all of that off, only exposing the trim work to then be painted back to black. I spray painted it in this order so that it would already be taped off for me to do dry brushing and I wouldn't have to worry about getting the metallic gold on the other parts. I used Rub and Buff for this particular build. Just put down a little dab of it on a plate and then using a chip brush I dab most of it off onto a paper towel and dry brush it on. You want to partially cover it to make the metal look like it's aged instead of trying to get a solid coat. Now the fun part, pulling back the tape and seeing how the contrast turned out. I chose to use a brighter red to make it stand out just a little bit more. This part is always like kind of opening a present. It reveals with surprise. Places that may have pulled up paint while I'm removing the tape are going to get weathered here in a minute anyway, so the paint job doesn't really have to be pristine. Now, for my favorite part of all builds, let's dirty this bad boy up. Using some acrylic paint and a wet chip brush, I spread the paint all over, making sure to get it down into the cracks, crevices, and corners. Then I wipe off high points with my paper towels. Usually, I make two or three passes to build up the dirtiness, and I typically use a, a brown and a black loosely mixed together as I go. Personally, I like to add leather or faux leather to a handle to make it feel good in the hand. This design had a simple wooden handle on the back, so I spruce it up with a little bit of faux leather from an old suitcase I bought at a garage sale a while back. And to add an even bigger detail on top of all of that, I spiraled a strip of real leather over the top in a darker color. And we are finished. Here is the end result. I love how this thing turned out. The inside and the outside, I think, turned out pretty clean. And I know what a lot of you are gonna like nitpick is like, oh, there should be a second strap there so you can put it on your arm better. <laughs> the designs I looked at just had the one, and actually they had it in the center, and to me, 
this makes more sense than like straight up just holding it straight forward. So I just went with kind of off centering it a little bit and um, yeah. I also kind of modified the color just a little. To me it looked like it was almost kind of an orangish more earthy tone um, and I, I kind of liked that red accent. I think it pops a little bit. Um, it makes that gold stand out some more so. Maybe you will try and make one of these shields yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to turn maybe concept art into a real world thing if it hasn't already been made somewhere. I, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. I'm sure you will. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these. Tell them much props. Uh, all right. One of the good things about shields like this is I can get a good push on you, so. Special thanks to all my awesome Patreon members for continuing to support what I do. Please consider joining them to help grow the channel bigger and better.